Welcome back to the Mystic Media Channel and happy Pisces season. So here are 10 movies to watch during Pisces season. Now, uh, Pisces is one of my favorite signs and Pisces is rather strong in my family. My grandfather was a Pisces. My, uh, I got two nephews who are Pisces. My second daughter is a Pisces and my oldest daughter is a Pisces rising. So Pisces is a big part of my life and I'm really grateful for that. Now let's get into it. So here are some movies to watch during Pisces season. First movie is Confessions of a Shopaholic. Now I just love this movie. Uh, this is a movie that everybody can watch, you, so you can watch it with your kids. It's rated PG, and this movie is so Pisces. I mean, in the beginning, like, when the film first starts, you see shoes, so it's, like, so Pisces, and this actress, Isla um, Fisher, even her name, Isla Fisher, is Pisces, and her moon happens to be in Pisces. She's actually born on my uh, oldest daughter's birthday. Uh, February 3rd. So she's an Aquarius with a Pisces moon and she just fits that whole Pisces character to a T. So let me just read about the uh, storyline. So Confessions of a Shopaholic was released in 2009. It's definitely a, a chick flick, but you know, guys can enjoy it too if they like a good comedy. Now, uh, struggling with her debilitating obsession with shopping and the sudden collapse of her income source, Rebecca Bloomwood, played by Isla Fisher, unintentionally lands a job writing for a financial magazine after a drunken letter mailing mix-up. Ironically, writing about the very consumer caution of which she herself has not abided. Rebecca's innovative comparisons and unconventional metaphors for economics grants her critical acclaim, public success, and the admiration of her supportive boss, Luke. But as she draws closer to her ultimate goal of writing for renowned fashion magazine, Alette, she questions her true ambitions and must determine if overcoming her shopaholic condition will bring her real happiness. So I definitely recommend watching this movie if you just want to watch a lighthearted comedy that has a Pisces theme, a strong Pisces theme. So definitely check this movie out if you've never seen it. All right, next movie. The Talented Mr. Ripley. Now, I love this movie. It's featuring Matt Damon, Jude Law, and Gwyneth Paltrow, and also, uh, oh, dude, uh, what's that other dude's name? Is it Seymour, Philip Seymour Hoffman? He's dead now, but very, very good film. It's um, one of those intriguing thriller drama type films, and it's very Piscean. So, let me just read the storyline. So The Talented Mr. Ripley was released in 1999. 1950s Manhattan laboratory attendant Tom Ripley borrows a Princeton jacket to play piano at a garden party. When the wealthy father of a recent Princeton grad chats Tom up, Tom pretends to know the son and is soon offered a thousand dollars to go to Italy to convince Dickie Greenlee Oh, that's played by Jew Law. Like, Jew Law killed this character. Um, basically, I see Jew Law as a Scorpio. But in the movie, I noticed that when uh, Tom Ripley, which is played by Matt Damon, is forging his passport or something like that, they have his birth date as him being a Taurus. So I'm like, okay, I'll give them that. He's a Taurus son, but I'm like, no. He's a Scorpio rising, Scorpio moon. So, because he is so Scorpio in this movie, Jude Law. But that would fit well, him being a Taurus sun, Scorpio moon rising, because of the conflict with his home life, his family, all that type of stuff, the issues with women, all that. This movie is so sultry. The cinematography is off the chain. So let me just finish reading the storyline. So, in Italy... Tom attaches himself to Dickie and to Marge, that's played by Gwyneth Paltrow, Dickie's cultured fiance, pretending to love jazz and harboring homoerotic hopes. The jazz theme is very Piscean. And harboring homoerotic hopes as he soaks in luxury. Besides lit lying, Tom's talents include impressions and forgery. 
So when the handsome and confident Dickie tires of Tom, dismissing him as a bore, Tom goes to the extreme lengths to make Greenleaf's privileges his own. So I definitely recommend watching this movie if you've never seen it. If you have seen it, watch it again during Pisces season. Watch it with through a Pisces lens this time. Next movie, Dead Presidents. Now, I saw this again recently, and it just brought back so many good memories. This is one of my favorite movies. Dead Presidents was released in 1995, and it has strong Piscean themes in this movie. Number one, there's just this underlying sadness in the film. And uh, Lorenz Tate character, I feel that he's a Pisces because, you know, he had this underlying sadness to him from the very beginning. And he basically made one of the greatest sacrifices uh, enlisting in the Marines during the Vietnam War time. So, you know, he went to the war, all that type of stuff. He was dealing with the post-traumatic stress disorder. He was having these crazy nightmares, all that stuff. So very Piscean. And, you know, he was like really down on his luck. His woman was, you know, always humiliating him and stuff. So let me just read the storyline. It's really short on IMDb. A Vietnam vet played by the talented Lorenz Tate adjusts to life after the war while trying to support his family. But the chance of a better life may involve crime and bloodshed. Lorenz Tate's character is a Pisces, in my opinion. So, um, but also, if you've seen this movie, um, remember uh, Bokeem Woodbine's character, Cleon, who was play, um, who played a supporting role, and he was one of his um, um, fellow soldiers in the Vietnam War? And in my opinion, Cleon was a Pisces as well. Because remember, he was a preacher's son. And he was crazy as cat shit during the Vietnam War. Now, I bet some of the craziest soldiers during war times are Pisces. Because Pisces can become fully immersed in whatever they're involved in at the time. And just, like, become this other person. So, remember when he stuffed that severed head in his backpack and then he became all superstitious about it like and he said when um when the sergeant was like get rid of that head because it was starting to rot and smell horrible and everybody was like yeah cleon get rid of the head so he got rid of the head and he was like we just buried our luck so that whole superstitious thing that's some dark side of pisces shit right there so i was like yeah that's so pisces and also the fact that he was the one that was singing to the cop when uh he got caught so i was like yeah that's very pisces also what's very piscean about the film is the soundtrack one of the uh songs in it is um the look of love by uh isaac hayes oh my god that's one of my favorite songs but the soundtrack is off the chain also what's very piscean is the part where they uh do the heist involving the armored car and where they paint their faces, because the painting of the faces is very Piscean as well. So if you've never seen Dead President, some of my younger viewers might have never seen it. Definitely check it out. It's a really good film. Like I said, it has this underlying theme of sadness. It has some really good dream sequences in it. And also, there's also that theme of compassion in there, uh, uh, displayed by that Jewish butcher, because he, you know, gave him a chance when uh, Lorenz Tate's character was down on his luck after coming back from the war. And, you know, he gave him a job. And then when he had to close the shop, he gave him the bag of uh, meat to take home. And also the Piscean theme with uh, Chris Tucker's character being the heroin addict and him overdosing and all that type of stuff. So, yeah, Dead President, very good film. Next movie. Marie Antoinette. Now, this is definitely a chick fil film, and it's not too historically accurate. It's dealing with, you know, uh, that time in the French period where uh, it was Marie Antoinette and King Louis the Fourteenth, I think he was, and basically, you know, the whole off with their heads and all that type of stuff because um, 
they lived a very decadent lifestyle, but the rest of France was living in poverty. And, you know, in history, they talk about how Marie Antoinette, she was so delusional and so out of touch with reality that when people were begging for food, and they were begging for bread, and she was like, let them eat cake if they don't have bread. Like, she just didn't get it. But the beauty of this movie and what makes it so Piscean is the cinematography and the richness, the, you know, just the, the, uh, the rich scenes. And as you can see in this one uh, image where, you know, she's surrounded by these decadent desserts and she's being pampered and she's living in a lap of luxury and she's just, you know, very sheltered because outside of that castle, like I said, the, you know, the French population, they were living in poverty. And that's how she ended up getting, you know, executed along with um, King Louis. But uh, it's a very good film. That chick uh, that Anthony Bourdain was involved with, why can't I think of her name right now? Um, Argento. Asia Argento. She's in it and she plays this dark-sided um, mistress of the king. So it's a really good movie. Check it out. Also, the soundtrack is pretty good, too. And what's interesting about the soundtrack, this was written and directed by Sofia Coppola, who was Francis Ford Coppola's daughter, I think. Daughter or niece, I want to know. But anyway, um, the soundtrack is modern. Like, she, there's songs from the 80s. But, of course, this is supposed to be uh, back in the 1600s, I believe. But let me just read the storyline. All eyes will be on you, says the Austrian Empress, Maria Theresa, to her youngest daughter, Marie Antoinette. The film marketed for a teen audience it is an impressionistic retelling, that's very Pisces, impressionist, an impressionistic retelling of Marie Antoinette's life as a young queen in the opulent and eccentric court at Versailles. The film focuses on Marie Antoinette as she matures from a teenage bride to a young woman and eventual. Queen of France. Now, Jason Schwartzman plays uh, Louis the Fourteenth. Is it Louis the Sixteenth or Louis the Fourteenth? Y'all correct me in the comment section. And uh, Kirsten Dunst plays Marie Antoinette, and I think she does a really good job. Now, some like this is one of those movies where you'll either love it or you'll hate it. If you're into like seeing like all like that decadence, and you like seeing like historical pieces, like the costumes and the art and all that type of stuff you'll really appreciate this film. If not, you know, it probably won't really appeal to you. Next movie. And that was released in 2006. Jacob's Ladder. Another very good film. One of my favorite movies from the 90s. Jacob's Ladder was released in 1990. Now, Jacob Singer, played by Tim Robbins, is trying to make sense of his fractured life and memories. Plagued by hallucinations, flashbacks, and conspiracies, he struggles down a path to enlightenment from these manic strains. With nothing but support from friends and loved ones, will he be able to push through his haze of PTSD? See, he's a Vietnam War vet, and he's having these flashbacks and all that type of stuff. Now, a young Ben Rains has a supporting role in this film, which is a treat. And also the actress S. Epatha Murkison, she's real dazzling as Elsa, the palm reader. She has a real bit, short little role in it, but like she's real uh, tantalizing in that film. And she has this line where she says, when she's reading his palm, she's like, see, according to this, you're already dead. <laughs> you out of here, baby. And uh, yeah, I love that line. And S. Epatha uh, Murkison, she played in that film, uh, Lackawanna Blues. I love that film. Anyway, moving along, Jacob's Ladder is really good because it has some very good dream sequences. It's like the whole movie is a bizarre dream, so that's very Piscean as well. Moving along, Black Panther. Of course, I wanted to get a modern movie in here, a movie that has been recently released, and I was like, okay, something dealing with a superhero theme because that's Pisces. So I was like, okay, what better movie than Black Panther? So Black Panther, I um I had stopped going to the movie theater years ago, but Black Panther brought me back into the movie theater. And I must say that it was a good uh, reunion coming back to the movie theater with this film. 
So let me just read the storyline. I'm sure a lot of my viewers have seen it. After the events of Captain America Civil War, Prince T'Challa returns home to the reclusive, technologically advanced African nation of Wakanda to serve as his country's new king. However, T'Challa soon finds that he is challenged for the throne from factions within his own country. When the two foes conspire to destroy Wakanda, the hero known as Black Panther must team up with CIA agent Everett K. Ross and members of Dora Milaje, Wakandan special forces, to prevent Wakanda from being dragged into a world war. So there's a strong Pisces theme with the superhero motif, but there's also a strong Pisces theme in that Wakanda was this shelter civilization. It was hidden from the world which is very Piscean, but also what's very Piscean is that this was a black superhero movie. And Pisces has been attributed to the black race. And it makes some sense in some respects because Pisces deals with slavery and the black race has a strong history with slavery. Also uh, think about the sacrifices that blacks have to make by being slaves, that's very Pisces. And also the confusion that um, resulted as a result of being enslaved in America that Black people were beset with. So Pisces and Black people is very strong. Also think about the strong artistic expression that Black people contribute to the world, which is very Pisces as well. And Black people, Black culture is very, makes a big impression upon the world which is very Piscean as well. So, like I said, I'm sure a lot of my viewers already seen Black Panther, but if you haven't, if you're not even into superhero films, you know, this is a film that you might really appreciate because it doesn't, it has a strong, um, what's the word, a strong human, human, strong human theme to it, strong humanity theme to element as opposed to some other superhero films. Now, moving along. Next movie, Being John Malkovich. Now, this is a very Piscean film. It was released in 1999. It's one of my favorite films of the 90s. So let me just read the storyline. Puppeteer Craig Schwartz, played by John Cusack. Now, John Cusack, after Better Off Dead, which is an 80s film, after he did that movie, this man could do no wrong in my eyes because that's one of my favorite 80s flicks. And uh, so let me just finish reading. So puppeteer Craig Schwartz, an animal lover and pet store clerk, Lot Schwartzman. So Lot Schwartzman played by um, Cameron Diaz. She's an animal lover, like an animal, like crazy addict, animal hoarder even. And uh, she's a pet store clerk. That's very Piscean. Um, are just going through the motions of their marriage. Despite not being able to earn a living solely through puppeteering, puppeteering is Piscean too. Craig loves his profession as it allows him to inhabit the skin of others. He begins to take the ability to inhabit the skin of others to the next level when he is forced to take a job as a file clerk for the off-kilter Lester Corp, located on the five-foot-tall, seven-and-a-half floor of a Manhattan office building. So when you walk into this office building, you can't walk like fully erect. You have to crunch, like crouch down which is very Pisces too. Like this whole movie is so Pisces because it's just weird and it doesn't make sense, but it does make sense once you get to the end. So um, basically behind one of the filing cabinets in his work area, Craig finds a hidden door, which he learns is a portal into the mind of John Malkovich. Now John Malkovich is a popular actor and he's a very talented actor and he plays a lot of weird quirky roles and he's just weird and quirky himself. So he fits really well to this film. And that's very Piscean to have a film called Being John Malkovich that includes the name of an actual actor about a fiction, it's a fictional movie. Like that's so Pisces. But anyway, um, so the visit through the portal, which lasts 15 minutes after which the person is spit into a ditch next to the New Jersey Turnpike. Craig is fascinated by the meaning of life associated with this finding. Lot's trips through the portal make her evaluate her own self. And the confident Maxine Lund, one of Craig's co-workers, who he tells about the, well, oh, I guess I didn't 
click on that to expand it. But anyway, this is a really good film. If you've never seen it, I definitely recommend that you watch it because it will take you into another realm for, you know, the two hours that it lasts. So it's really good. It will like just, it, it's far out. Next movie. Now to keep it lighthearted, I had to uh, take it to Friday after next. Now this is my favorite Friday out of the Friday trilogy. I like all three Fridays, but Friday after next is my favorite hands down. And um, for a number of reasons, but in my opinion, Day Day played by Mike Epps is a Pisces because like he's just he's just a mess. Now, anyway, let me just read the uh, storyline. So Friday After Next was released in 2002. Also, the Pisces theme with the you know the smoke and weed, all that, which is the underlying theme for all of the Friday movies. Now Craig and Day Day have finally moved out of their parents' houses and into their own crib. The cousins work nights at a local mall as security guards. When their house is robbed on Christmas Eve, they team up to track him down. So, a lot of my viewers, I'm sure you've seen this movie. It is a riot. It is goofy as hell. It is stupid as hell. Mike Epps is stupid as hell. He's just, like, just so silly in this film. Um, of course, Ice Cube is funny, but Ice Cube always tries to play the voice of reason in the Friday films. So really, the the star of the Friday films is always the supporting roles, not really Ice Cube. But uh, Ice Cube always, you know, he's a treat to watch as well. But uh, definitely watch it. Also, what's Pisces is the prison theme because uh, Terry Crews plays the ex-con who comes out and he bullies uh, Day Day and Craig. So, you know, that's really funny. So, yeah. So Friday after next, you know, if you've seen this movie already, check it out again during Pisces season. Just, you know, to stay with that Pisces theme. Next film, Fear and Loathing in Las Vegas. Now, this definitely has a strong Pisces theme because of the drug use, but also it's just one of those far out movies. It's like you're in this drug haze. It's very Pisces, very 12th house. Um, it's very dark sided Pisces. So if you want to see how dark sided Pisces gets down, you know, watch this film. Now, storyline. This was released in 1998, starring Johnny Depp and Benicio del Toro plays a supporting role. Now, the big screen version of Hunter S. Thompson, he was this weird reporter. So this is based upon, loosely based upon a true story. So Hunter S. Thompson was this weird dark sided reporter. And he would be on all types of drugs and stuff while he was doing his uh, reporting, while he would be doing his stories and all that type of stuff. And actually, Hunter S. Thompson, he has a dark, um, he has a dark past. He's he's dead now, but he was associated with the Franklin cover up. And if you don't know about the Franklin cover up, Google that. If you're into conspiracy theories, you might already know about the Franklin cover up. I have the book. And if you go and read the book, I warn you, it's very graphic and it scared the shit out of me. I read it when I was, what, like 20 years old and it freaked me out. So um, maybe I was 21 when I read it. But anyway, Hunter S. Thompson, he, he was a very dark character in real life. And it's evident in this film. But Johnny Depp, he's a really great actor, as a lot of my viewers already know. He can really get into character. He's one of those method actors where he will like be in character even when the uh you know the film is not uh when the film ain't uh, rolling so yeah check out fear and loathing in las vegas it's really good it's unsettling in some parts and last but not least donnie darko donnie darko was released in 2001 it's a very piscean um, themed film because it has a lot of dream sequences. It is very bizarre, as you can see, with this demonic looking rabbitoid creature that constantly is like haunting Donnie Darko and he comes to Donnie Darko in dreams and visions. Also, this movie is very much about prescription drugs. And it's one of those movies where, you know, you can come up with your own explanation because it really doesn't provide an explanation. You've got to kind of try to figure it out. And if you Google 
Donnie Darko. And if you uh, search for Donnie Darko on YouTube, you'll see a lot of videos where people are trying to provide their explanation of what it really means. I have my own explanation. I actually wrote a long, I actually wrote up a synopsis of what I felt like this film was really about. And I'm not going to give it away, but I will say I feel like there's a strong underlying theme of child molestation in this film that's not blatantly discussed, but you can see hints about it. And I believe that's the underlying issue dealing with Donnie Darko and why he's on these prescription drugs and why he goes to see a therapist and all this stuff. Now, Donnie Darko is played by the lovely Jake Gyllenhaal. There's something about Jake Gyllenhaal. I, I'm just like, I, he just got something to him that just like appeals to me. Like he just has that on screen magic. So I like just about every film he's in. I never seen Roadback Mountain though. But um, what's that other film he was? He was in a few other films that I really like. But yeah, I like Jake Gyllenhaal. He does a really good job playing this melancholic, um, just apathetic teen. So check out Donnie Darko if you haven't seen it. Now, that's another film where some people, either you're going to love it or you're going to hate it. If you hate it, it's probably because you just don't understand it and you're not into films that really don't provide a clear uh, outcome or a clear ending or a clear explanation, but it's definitely Piscean to the max. So let me know what you think in the comment section. Share any videos that you have that you feel are very fitting for Pisces season. And if you would like a reading, you could go to my website at rabina.com. I'm thinking about going live um, pretty soon, probably on Friday night. So stay tuned for the notification. So I will be back with more videos. Peace and many blessings.